Shakers, you feeling good? You are singing so good, you're praising so good. I want to encourage us tonight that there is power in our praise. When we make a choice to lift up the name of Jesus, no matter what we're going through, he brings breakthrough to our lives. And if you were here today, you heard Pastor Rudy talk about a broken praise. No matter what situation you find yourself in, if you make a choice tonight to lift up the name of Jesus, no matter how you're feeling, no matter what's going on in your life, I believe he's going to bring breakthrough to your life tonight. So can we do that right now for the next 30 seconds? Give him that broken praise. Give him a praise that he deserves tonight with the loudest sound. One, two, three. Come on, let this place erupt with his praises. Come on, he's worthy. Come on, he's so worthy. That was a good shout. And part of me just wants to move on, but no, I really feel in my spirit that there is a breakthrough on the other side of this next shout. So I want to encourage every single person to come on, shout it from your spirit tonight. Shout your praise. It's going to open up the heavens in this place tonight. Are you ready? Come on, are you ready? Come on, let's not just do another praise set. Let's go somewhere amazing tonight. You ready? One, two, three.
song of worship.
Jesus. 
I said, shake your neighbor. Something is about to break loose in this place. Find somebody else and say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Woo! I don't know about you, but I can smell victory in the spirit this morning. I said, I can smell victory in this place. When the blood of Jesus is over a place, all you will smell is life and victory. We're coming into Easter and I just smell the blood of Jesus is releasing victory in this place. Now you may have come into conference with some battles. Give me a wave if you had some battles coming here. I said, if you had some battles coming here, well, God's about to answer that and give you victory right now. Hold up, hold up. I want to welcome all those who are watching through Daystar all around the world. Here in Melbourne, Australia, we are going to release on the count of three a shell that is going to lift the heavenlies. Come on, lift the roof and open up the heavenlies so that the sound waves come on out of this place. Come on, the white supernatural frequency of heaven is going to resonate from this place. You better pull yourself together and get yourself ready. I feel like the next generation is ready. Where's my next generation, people? Are you ready? On the count of three, we're going to release it through the airwaves and open up the heavens. Every hand lifted up high from the front to the back. If you haven't got your hand up, you better lift it up. Come on, we need every hand lifted up. I need everyone standing right now. Everybody partaking in this. It's going to take a united effort. Are you ready? Man, are we ready? I'm telling you, it's about to break open. Angels are ascending and descending. Miracles are just going to happen. You will go back home at the end of this week. Go back to victory after victory after after from glory to glory. Get ready. Here we go. It's about to open up like crazy world. In the name of Jesus, I declare every wall is coming down right now. In every nation, in every city, in every suburb, in every high school. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we declare the blood of Jesus has disarmed every power of darkness. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, let's do it down. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. We open it up the heavenly realm. You got more in here. Come on, man. I know you got more in here. Come on. The devil won't come down and out. But Jesus said, Play that team. That is in me. I'm telling you, you got the king of glory. Can you dig just a little bit deeper? I know you. I know your flesh is saying no. But let your spirit out. I need to just release you. Come on, just take your conference face off. I know you look good, but just take that conference makeup off. We're not doing conference, we're, we're here to encounter God. Planet Shakers, we're here to encounter God. Shake your neighbor and say, get ready, get ready. Find someone else and say, get ready, get ready.
We're about to go into a new dimension. We're about to go into new territory. Hallelujah. Woo. I want to honor my senior pastors, my mentors, my inspiration, Pastor Russell and Pastor Sam Evans. I love you so much. I don't know how I got here. <laughs> I just want to honor you and thank you, Pastor Sam is out back. Would you give it up for my senior pastors, my mentors? Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up. 20 years. If your life has been transformed by Panda Shakers, come on, let them know. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for changing our lives, sacrificing your family, finances, time, money. We love you. Come on, show your appreciation. Are you ready? I don't know how I got here. I was an intern. Where's my, my wife is somewhere. Rach, just wave, please. My wife is here. There she is. Come on, wave, girl. Wave, Rach. We came here in 2007. See some Wellingtonians here. From Wellington, New Zealand. We just got married in 2006, July. And somebody said, hey, go check out Planet Shakers and sign up for the internship program. We signed up for an in internship. Anybody seen uh, In Pursuit of Happiness, Will Smith? That was me, man. That was me. I almost got close to sleeping in the toilet. Just joking, just joking. If you know that movie. We got a flat, a unit in Dandenong. It's the capital city of Melbourne. Dandenong, it's the capital city of Melbourne. Cracked walls, one suitcase. One bed, nothing, nothing, man, nothing. Everybody said nothing. I had nothing. All we had was a call of God. We left our family and friends. We, we left everything that we were familiar with and came here. I had no idea that 10 years later I'd be preaching on this platform. But this atmosphere does something to you. For the last 20 years, this vision has been inspiring people to just believe that they can change the world. I was just an intern, but in this atmosphere, God said, you're gonna change the world, son. And God is saying that to you right now. You don't need to be, have a VIP pass. Come on, man. You don't have to have a special, special tag. You just have to believe that you can shake the planet. If you believe that you can change the world, lift your hands. You just have to believe. I know you may not have any money in the bank, but you got the currency of heaven in this place. You have faith. I want you on the count of three. Lift up another shelf and break up all the doubt and unbelief. Everything that's been thrown against you to stop you believing that you can shake the planet. Break it right now. Ready? One, two, three, go. some exercise no lazy Christians in church you're gonna do some exercise help me Lord should we pray Lord Jesus help me amen those are my prayers lately I've got no time to think I just got to say help me someone say help me Jesus that's good enough are you hungry for the word thank you Ben keys can stay with me. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Do you believe God's word? It doesn't return void. Do you believe God's word will accomplish everything that it's sent to fulfill? Yeah. It will just take one word right now that can t change your whole situation around. Do you believe that the word of God will fulfill everything that it said it can do? Do you believe the, the word of God created heavens and the earth? 
Do you believe it takes just one word to turn a situation around? Yeah. Now just lift your hands and get yourself ready because the heavens are wide open for you. There are no blockages. Father, I pray that you would release your word to the individuals today. We know them by name. We know the battles they're going through. We know the right thing to say. That is clear to us. You know how to talk to us. You know how to hug us. You know how to love us. You know how to embrace us. I pray that you would release a word for every single individual in this place. In Jesus' name. Everyone says. There's a word for you. Have you got your Bibles? Okay, about 20 of you. Have you got your Bible? That's better. Joshua chapter 6. Hey! Next gen in the building. I said Joshua chapter 6. Let's read the scripture. The title of my message t tonight is War Cry. The title of my message is War Cry. Someone say War Cry. There's a war cry in your spirit. I know there's a shout, but the shout releases a war cry that's deep in your spirit. Here we have the Israelites that are about to cross over into new territory. You came here because God is about to take you into new territory. It's about to take your business into new territory. It's about to take your church pastors into a new territory. Your education, young person, God's about to take you into new territory. Places you've never been to before. And here we have the Israelites that are about to enter into new ground. Joshua chapter 6 verse 1, it says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. It won't say straight in. You're going to go straight in by the end of this week. I said you're going to go straight in to the new territory that God has for you. Nothing is going to stop you. You are going to go straight in. Verse 6, it says, So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant. In other words, carry the presence of God. We can't do this unless we're carrying the presence of God. And he ordered the army, Advance. Someone shout, Advance. You're going to move forward. You're going to accelerate into your new territory. March around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord, they went forward blowing the trumpets. Let me just skip down to verse 10. But Joshua had commanded the army, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to camp and spent the night there. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak. Someone say daybreak. daybreak. Say it again, say it strong, say daybreak. daybreak. I need everybody participating from the back. Say daybreak. daybreak. This is when you're in between seasons. When you're in between seasons, you need a shout that releases a war cry. I know you sound good, but that sound needs to get to a place where it unlocks the warrior in you. Because Jesus is a mighty warrior. Your God is a mighty warrior. He fights on your behalf. If you're at a daybreak moment, 
in the best place for God to move you forward. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout for the Lord has given you the city. God is going to give you your city. A few of you believe that. I said God is going to give you your city. If God said, if God called this conference to be suburb shakers, yeah, but no, 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 come on now. This is called put shakers. So that means God wants you to take your city. It's gonna take Wellington. Come on now. It's gonna take Malaysia. Come on now. It's gonna take Singapore. Come on now. It's gonna take the cities around the world, around Australia. God is gonna give you your city. You will take the city. When you find the war cry in you. When the trumpet sounded, the, the army shouted at the sound of the trumpet. When, the, when the, man, the man gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in. They took the city. Here's my focus verse. For the next 20 minutes, you're going to find a war cry in you that you never knew you had. This is not based on personality. This is not based on your cultural background. It's not based on the color of your skin. This is based on who your daddy is. You sound like your daddy. Look like your daddy. Walk like your daddy. Bounce like your daddy. Roll like your daddy. Come on now, got swag like your daddy. Come on now, you're gonna walk right in, straight in. This is what's going to happen. You're going to find a war cry in you. You're going to sound just like your God in every battle that you face from this moment onwards. Your voice will be God's voice. The Bible says we are not, we're not fighting against flesh or blood. We're not fighting people. Stop fighting people, man. Church people, stop fighting people. I said, church people, let's stop fighting each other. Get our eyes off each other. Come on, man. We're, let's not get distracted in church life. Wasting time and energy fighting people. We're not fighting people. We're not starting wars, natural wars. Our battle is against flesh, is against rulers, authorities, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. But praise be to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57, 57 says, Praise be to God who gives us the victory. Anybody believe that? Praise be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Woo. God has disarmed all the powers of darkness. We got these office keys at Planet Shakers. They're called fob keys. Any fobs in the building? Hey, come on. I know in a generation before, that wouldn't have gone down well. But we're all good. This is not an islander. Our staff members aren't carrying islanders with them. No, this fob is like, is a, it's the keys we use to disarm the alarm system. Do you know the blood of Jesus is your fob? The blood of Jesus disarms all the powers of darkness over your city, over your family, over your school, over your nation. The blood of Jesus has already disarmed all the powers of darkness, making a public spectacle of the enemy on the cross. Let's check this out. The Israelites were ready to enter and possess new territory, but God had to take them through a process for preparing them With new territory, there's always going to be new obstacles. There are giants in this new land. There are giants in our families. But we are in a moment right now where we are going to slay some giants. In the next 20 years of Planet Shakers, 20 plus, we're going to take some giants down. I said we're going to take some giants down. 
and see entire cities won. We are going to see entire nations discipled. We're coming into a moment, a beautiful moment, right place, right time for God's children to step in and take territory. If you believe that, just give God a shout right now and just thank Him. Just thank Him, just thank Him, just thank Him. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your time right now. Is this all good? We're just, we're, just having, we're just having a family talk. Is that all right? You have to excuse me. The keyboard sometimes gets me on the hype. But we'll just flow with it. Um, so that God had to take his children through a process so that they could stay in the land of promise. It's one thing to get to the land of promise, but it's another thing to stay in the land of promise. It's one thing to get the blessing or get the promise, but there's another thing to actually hold on to the promise. Sometimes it's like water running through your hands. Have you ever felt like that? Where you're lifting your hands, but you can't contain them. You can't carry it. You feel like there's holes in the bucket and nothing is contained. But God doesn't want us to miss out or lose out. He wants us to carry it. He wants us to contain it. He wants us to live and breathe in the land of promise. He wants us to live there, to taste it, to feel it. No longer just hearing a prophecy but never feeling it with your tangible hands. You ever been frustrated? Any honest Christians out there? Getting tired and just feeling like you're not. Dream is almost there, but you're not quite gripping it. This is your moment to step right in and possess the land. what God had to do. It's not always easy, the journey. But being a disciple is, is not easy. What did God do? He made them pass through the Jordan River. The Jordan is the place of consecration. The jo Jordan is the place of like, it's like a baptism. It's like a cleansing. When you're worshiping and you're praising God, it's like God's washing over your soul. Do you feel that? I love worship because it, it just washes over all my, all the emotions and all the confusion in my mind, all the doubts and the unbelief. It just, he just washes over you. His presence comes and he washes over you. God puts you in a, a Jordan kind of seasons over and over and just washes over you, cleanses you. But then he brings you to a place like Gilgal. All the men, you all better get ready for this one. This is the place of circumcision. Amen. Amen. Let's just say it as it is. Let's just say it as it is. This is where the flesh gets cut off. Anybody ever had an operation before? Yeah, yeah, and then especially the men. Men are, men are really bad at this. You know, they get operations and they're in the lounge. You know, they're a mighty man of God. And the next thing when they get after an operation, like, uh, can you give me a cup of tea? Can you rub my back? Oh, can, can, you, can you get me some biscuits? He said, Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, men, we're really bad at that. It's, it got, got them to the place of Gilgal where it circumcised the men, but God had to heal them first. What does God do? He takes you through a process where he cuts things off. He'll cut that girlfriend off. He'll cut that job off. He'll cut anything that keeps you in the flesh. He, he doesn't care. God doesn't care. Uh, I know you hear preachers that say God cares and loves you. He doesn't care. I don't know. I've been walking with Jesus. Sometimes it's like he doesn't care. I said, God, man, you took my dreams. What? You took my girlfriend. I'm married now, so it's all good. He said, you took my family. You took my dad. My dad passed away when I was 16. I don't know. I don't know why. He didn't. I can't explain it. But it felt like God cut things off me. But God knows 
how to take you through a process where He can prune you to a place where you really are depending on God. You're not just worshipping in the flesh, but you really are worshipping and praising from your spirit. He knows what to cut off your life so that your spirit is open to Him. You can trust God in the process of circumcision. Now, I know some of you are getting a bit uncomfortable every time I say that word. But I thank God we're in the New Testament. So, all the men say, Amen. Amen, men. The circumcision that happens is a circumcision of the heart. This is where God cuts all the attitudes. Come on now. All the judgmental attitudes. Come on now. All those attitudes in our heart, God just cuts it off so He can prepare you. You can't go into new territory with the flesh still on you. Come on now. You can't go into a new dimension with some fleshly mindsets. You can't take your church, pastors, into a new territory with an offended heart. Come on now, we can't do that. We can't take Planet Shakers to a new season if we're just going to carry some things that God wants to cut off. We need to allow God this week, say, God, would you just cut off things that you don't want me to take into the promised land because those things are not going to keep me in there. How does God prepare us for prayers, prepares people to go into new territory? As He cleanses them, He washes us. Then He uh, cuts some things off. That's not always the easiest process. And then He brings us to the place of Jericho. I know many of you have been shouting. I know. Because I've been there too when you're like shouting, but think you're still not entering into the presence fully. Anybody ever felt like that? You're doing, you're just trying to be a good Christian. I'm trying to be a good Christian. I'm trying to be a good pastor. Pray for me that I just behave myself. That I don't say silly things or post silly things on Instagram. I'm, I'm praying. We do some silly things. You know what, God? God wants us, God wants our, our spirit open to Him. So how does He prepare us? He br brings us out of the place of circumcision and he waits until you're fully healed. Let's not rush the process. I know some of you want to get ahead in ministry and get ahead in your dream. But sometimes the process is long. But God will take you through that process long, long enough. He'll take you through a process long enough until you're fully healed. I think there's way too many leaders in church sometimes that are not fully healed. I'm talking to myself. I'm still in the process. My, my prayers have changed now. Before when I was a, a, a young in the Lord, I said, yeah, God, use me. Yeah, yeah use me. Now it's, now it's like, God, don't use me. I want, don't use me. I want to sit on the couch and have a cup of tea. I just want to, have a, I want to go back to Fiji and just sit on the island there and just enjoy some, uh, enjoy some food, you know? I just want to... Because sometimes we want to rush the process, but God needs to heal us first. And when, after he heals us, he then brings the shout out of us. Are you ready? We're about to shout. He brings the war cry out of us once we've been through this process. How does God enter us in, washes us, heals us, then he trains us for war? He trains us for war and he trains us how to get a war cry out of our spirit. Brings us to a place of Jericho. Anybody got some Jericho walls in front of them? Give me a wave. Lift it real high. Some impossible situations. You're in the perfect training place for God to bring the war cry out of your spirit that is going to bring you into your promised land moments. He trained them at Jericho. He was sending them into the promised land with the war cry. He wasn't sending them in with self-pity. He wasn't sending them in feeling sorry for themselves. He wasn't sending them in with the slave mentality. Gilgal, he rolled the, the reproach of Egypt off them. The blood of Jesus cleanses every slave mentality. He takes every bit of, because slaves don't know how to shout. Slaves don't know how to ask for what they want. 
Slaves don't know how to speak up when they've been mistreated and abused and rejected and dejected. Slaves, slaves don't know how to do that. Slaves don't have a war cry in this spirit, but sons and daughters do. I said sons and daughters. This is your DNA. This is not just something that comes out of the mic. This is in your voice, in your spirit. It's the DNA of your God. You have a war cry in your spirit because you are a son and a daughter of God. If we want to possess the promises of God, we need to have a war cry. You will go into every battle. If you believe it, you will go into every battle from this moment onwards knowing how to win. Some of you believe that I said you will go into every battle knowing how to win. You will go into every battle from this moment onwards. The moment you experience the war cry coming out of your spirit, you will already, you will go into every battle already victorious. So here uh, is what we have to do. Then we're going to release the war cry. First thing, we have to come into unity. If we're going to take planet shakers, I believe every person that's here right now has been assigned by God to release this war cry. Not just the pastors, I'm saying every single person that's here. You are here by divine appointment. From the front to the back, left to the right, you are here. By divine appointment to shake the planet. We have to come into agreement. Church leaders, we need to come into agreement. We need to come into agreement with Jesus first. We need to come into agreement with leadership. I know some of you don't have perfect leaders. There's no perfect leader. If you're waiting for the perfect leader, you'll be waiting forever. You may not be able to control your your situation, but you can control your heart. If you make a decision to control your heart as a, as a child of God, you will bring a war cry into your church. You will bring a war cry into your community. We need to come into agreement with leadership. Some of us find it easy to come into agreement with God and put a leader over you. Oh, yeah, whatever, man. No, 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 come on, man. We have to have agreement. Because this is what unity does. Unity commands the blessing, Psalm 133. Where there's unity, God generates the anointing. If you make a decision to be in unity, you will generate an anointing for a war cry. To get a war cry, we need to be in unity. We need the anointing to rest on us. Unity releases the oil. You could be a catalyst for your church if you just have a desire in your heart to be in unity. You will stir up the anointing over your life to bring a war cry in your city. The Israelites had to come into agreement so that they could generate supernatural power. Supernatural power is generated out of our unity. Second thing is self-control. Discipline. Joshua was training the people to exercise self-control. In other words, let's discipline our minds. I know you sound good when you're worshiping, but discipline your mind. Discipline your emotions. Bring your mind, will, and emotions and physical body into subjection to the Spirit of God in you. If you're a son or a daughter of God, you are led by the Spirit, not by your emotions. You're not led by your thoughts. You're led first by your spirit. I know you want to punch some people. I want to punch some people. But I can't because I want my spirit to lead, not my flesh. I want to keep my spirit pure so that I can win battles. You have to have self-control. This is what God is going to do right now. 
going to help us in worship pull ourselves together. The blood of Jesus, God has already empowered us to exercise self-control. We have the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, forgives us, heals us. We have the Holy Spirit that empowers and teaches, counsels, encourages us. And we have the Word of God that renews our mind. We have everything that we need to have self-control. God was training His people how to release the spiritual war cry. Help me out, band. We're about to release this. God was training His people how to release the spiritual war cry and shout out of their spirit and not from their flesh. This is what God was doing through Joshua. They had the trumpets blowing, but they were told not to raise their voices or to release the war cry. They couldn't release the war cry until they exercised self-control. So this is what Joshua did. Shh. Nobody talk. Shh. Just walk around. Don't say anything out of your flesh. I know you're hurting. But don't say anything out of your hurt. Don't say anything out of your confusion. The shout doesn't come from your flesh. Shh. I know your mind is warring. I know your emotions are stirring. Shh, don't say anything. What was, what was God training his people to do? Is to pull themselves together and get ready to unlock the war cry from their spirit. These keyboards are going to be our trumpets. Play something, trumpet players. Can you feel that? Can you feel that? You are in the perfect place to release the war cry, to bring you in to your land of promise. Let's silence all the fear, let's silence all the doubt. Let's silence all the unbelief. Let's silence all the rejection. Let's silence all the disunity. And let's get ready to shout. The word shout means breaking, blowing alarm, destroy, triumph. It went around seven times, symbolizing perfection. If we exercise self-control, God perfects. you're ready. You feel like your mind and your will and emotions are in a good place. If you're in peace, I want you to stand to your feet quietly. You're about to enter in. You're about to enter in. Your new ground is a lot closer than you think. Lift your hands. Lift your hands from the front to the back. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Thank you, God. 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 I want us to release the power of the blood of Jesus to wash over us right now. We're going to sing this song. Beautiful. Because you're beautiful. You're a child of God. Lift every hand lifted up high. We're going to sing this from the top. I want you to go for it and just let the blood of Jesus cleanse you, heal you. Come on, cut some things off right now. Let's sing this. Let's sing this band from the top. Lift your hands, lift your hands.
have it. You can use it every day of your life. You got it. No depression can stop you anymore. No suicidal tendency can stop you. No sickness. Nothing can stop the war cry anymore in you. I want to pray for some children in this place that are still slaves to the world. But right now, God needs you to come back home. With every head bowed and every eye closed, it's time for you to come out of the wilderness. It's time to come out of your slavery and be who God created you to be, to be a child of God. On the count of three, if you're away from God, you're not right with Him. But today, today you'll be right with him you can invite Jesus into your heart when Jesus shouted on the cross it is finished it was a war cry to declare that hell will no longer prevail his flesh was crucified but he shouted out of his spirit, it is finished! It is finished! It is finished! That's you here today. Every head bow, every eye closed on the count of three. All you gotta do is lift your hands. One, two, three. Lift your hands right now. Lift it high to God. Lift it high to God. Lift it high. Hands going up all around this place. Lift it high. I know there's more. Lift it up. Don't let fear stop you. Lift it, lift it high. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Now I want you to say this prayer to invite Jesus into your heart. And the war cry, the warrior, Jesus, will come into your heart and shout in you for every battle that you face and for you to have victory in life and eternal life. Would you say these words after me? Let's say this together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your grace. And I receive you into my heart. Cleanse me. Heal me. And make me brand new. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says... I think we should join with the angels and rejoice as souls have come in. Come on, celebrate. Souls coming in. Coming out of darkness into the marvelous light. Hey, thank you for watching Planet Shakers Conference 2017. I hope you've been inspired in your faith. You can check out other sessions on daystar.com forward slash Planet Shakers. If you'd like some prayer, you can call the number on the screen or you can check out website daystar.com forward slash prayer. Hey, I hope you're enjoying yourself and been inspired. Hope to see you soon.